Are you guys interested in learning how to build planes and how it's done? Well, my name's Louise and I work on Boeing planes. I've been working for Boeing since June of 1943, which is just a little more than a year ago. And what I do is I work as far as riveting. So I work with these airplanes and I place the rivets that help hold the wings to the airplane and help hold also the airplane overall together. And I work with an item such as this one. You guys know what it is? A screw. A nail. Do you have a guess? A rivet, correct. This item is a rivet. And this tiny little piece of aluminum is what helps hold this plane together. Any ideas on how many rivets are placed on an airplane such as this one? A thousand, good guess, but there's more. 2,000? About a million, oh, that'd be way too many. <laughs> 1,000? This, what do you think? 200,000, that is a very good guess. This plane holds 400,000 rivets on it. So yeah, 400,000 rivets are placed throughout the wings, the nose, the tail of this airplane holding it together. So there are about six teams that work on this airplane at a time. We work in teams of two because it requires two people in regards to the riveting. So what I do is I'm the riveter and I work with a riveting gun and the riveting gun is used to hold that rivet and then when I'm ready, I place the rivet up to the airplane and I hammer it in. A bucking bar is then used on the other side, which is what the second person does and what my friend Janet does. And she works with a bucking bar. And that bucking bar is used to then bang against the tail end of the rivet and then it flattens it out so that, that way the rivet will not come out of the airplane. Because if I just hammered it in and there was nothing holding it, then it would basically just be like sticking a penny through a hole. And so it would just fall right through or just fall out. So the bucking bar is very important as far as um, flattening out the tail end of the rivet so that, that way it's smooth and there will be no jiggling of it. Someone comes by and checks all these rivets that we place. So as I said, there's about teams of, there's six teams that work on the airplane doing riveting alone. There's also teams that work as far as the engines and placing the other items that are in this airplane. But there's just six teams that do the riveting on this airplane. And so once we place the rivets where they need to go, someone comes behind us and checks the work to make sure that all the rivets that need to be there are there. Do you guys know how many hours Boeing is open a day? 24, correct. Boeing operates 24 hours a day and seven days a week. So I work usually between four and five days a week, and usually my days are around 10 hour days. So a lot of work is done. Do you guys have any idea how many airplanes we build a day? 20, Ooh, a little too many. <laughs> what do you think? Zero, oh no, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> 10, good guess, good guess. 18, oh, a few too many. Three or two. Well, she said 10, and we build about 12 to 14 airplanes each day. So there is a nickname for an airplane such as this one. This plane is called a Boeing B-17, but there's also a nickname for it. Do any of you guys know what the nickname for a Boeing B-17 might be? Any guess? Any guess could be a right guess, so take a guess. It's called the B-17. There's a nickname for it. <laughs> 17. 17. That's a good guess, but no. Any other ones? No, this plane is known as a Flying Fortress or Fort for short. Yeah, Flying Fortress. This plane holds around 13 machine guns in it, and they are placed throughout the wings, the nose, and the tail. This is also a bomber plane, so this plane does carry bombs on it which are used and there's a bomb bay door in the belly of the airplane. But yeah, this plane holds around 13 machine guns. So if people see it, they'd be like, oh, it's basically a flying fortress through the sky. So that's how it got the nickname of fortress so, and then changed into fort also. Now, do you know why women might be doing this job and why the government started a campaign to get us to be able to have these jobs open to us? Correct, yes. Men are fighting in the war. There are men here, but a lot of men have gone off to fight in the war. 
And so they weren't around to build these airplanes or the ships or the weapons needed. So they opened up these jobs to women so that we were able to fill that role and get these planes off the ground and also build the weapons and the ships. It's also given us an opportunity to make an income for ourselves. And it's also a way for us to serve, because as you mentioned, women aren't over there fighting in the war and we're not building, we're not also flying these airplanes. And so it's been a great opportunity to be able to, to give back to the, um, our country. Now, people do this job all over the country. Do you know what a nickname is for a woman such as me in this position and what we're doing? Rosie? Is that what you said? Do you know the second part to it? Yes, correct. Our nickname is Rosie the Riveter, and that's a nickname given to all women in this kind of position, and also other positions, but women working in the industry. Now, do you, are any of you guys really strong? Well, that's great. Then you guys would also be really good at working with the bucking bar. Because as I mentioned, there's two of us that do this job. And there's a riveter such as me, and there's a person that works with the bucking bar. Any idea how much that bucking bar weighs that they have to hold? Do you have a guess? 10 pounds, a little bit more than that. The bucking bar weighs around 50 pounds. So yeah, it can be kind of heavy. But yeah, and then are any of you guys good with your hands and have good coordination? Well, then you guys would be great at the job that I do, which is the riveting. Because yeah, you have to have good coordination as far as placing that rivet just right so that it doesn't slide out or so that you don't strip the rivet. Because if the rivet is stripped or if it goes in crooked, then there's a chance that it may come out. So you want to make sure that you're placing it correctly. So any other ideas why I maybe have taken this job? Do you think maybe I would take it for making money? Yeah? Do you guys have any idea how much I make an hour? Do you have a guess? Oh, okay. oh what do you want to say? Uh, I was thinking maybe you could be strong about that you're strong, just like the men. Mm-hmm, yeah, no, definitely. It's been a very rewarding job, yeah. And just to prove that also we can do what men can do. So this job being open to us, you know, has been a great thing. And a lot of women are doing it all over. And I'm hoping maybe even go to be able to go to another area and do this same job. But do you know how much I make an hour? Any guesses? $30? $30? No, I make, it's in cents. I make a certain amount of cents an hour. <laughs> Any 15 cents, a little more than that, but that would be okay, I guess. 35 cents, a little more than that. I make around 62 cents an hour, but that's pretty good money, because what time, did, what era are we in? 40s, correct. It's around World War II era, and that's when most of these planes were used. So yeah, it's around 1943, and so I make 62 cents an hour which is really good money. And I'm hoping to be able to go to college with this money. So that's one reason also why I took this job in hopes that when the war is over that I can go to school. Do you guys have any other last questions? Did you always use a rivet gun or do you sometimes switch bars? I just work with a rivet gun. Um, I do know how to do both positions as they do train us so that we are able to, but I just work with a riveting gun. Any other questions? Yes, that is what a riveting gun looks like, yes. So it's not quite like a screw gun just because the rivet is hammered in and not twisted or anything. So it has a flat surface that then hammers the rivet in. So any other last questions? Well, thank you guys so much for coming and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.